name is Sarah. Welcome to the It's a Sarah podcast. Today it is Friday, October 6th, 2023, and this is episode 110. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutchy English. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk, so that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. I love talking about my knits and crochet so much that I make episodes twice a week, every Monday and Friday, and I make them in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Okay, let's go! I want to share my crafty adventures adventures from this week with you, and I've made a list because there were quite some, and, and a few I will save for coming Monday, because otherwise the episodes will be way too long. Um, yeah, so... Uh, No, no. let's start with what I'm wearing. (laughs) That's the easy part. I'm wearing my sock cardigan today and it is pattern release day for this uh, pattern for this cardigan. And I showed it last Monday in my episode and I didn't know then that the pattern would come out so soon. Um, Otherwise, I think I would have saved it for today. Uh, And I said, oh, I will make a separate video, a separate episode of it. Um, No, I won't do that. Um, But I will share all the details about my cardigan. It's actually quite a kind of a summary because I shared all the detail details for weeks <laughs> since the beginning of August. Um, but I will share it at the end. So if you uh, are uh, bothered by it because you've heard it uh, so uh, so often, uh, you can skip that part. But it is very nice, I can tell you, because I love the cardigan. Um, it is hard jumping. <laughs> so um, that will come to the uh, at the end of the episode. Uh, and um, I'm also wearing my hinterland dress. And that's immediately uh, uh, a kind of a, <laughs> a crafty adventure. This is my... I, I didn't make this hinterland dress. But I'm organizing uh, the hinterland make-along with uh, Jessica, a knitting friend. And the perfect sewer. I am not a sewer. I'm a wannabe sewer. I guess I don't know if I really want to be a sewer, but I want to be a person who can makes uh, who can make these kind of dresses if she wants to. <laughs> I, I need more dresses in my life. Actually, it is it is um, uh, mainly that point. Um, so we organized the make along uh, to connect with all the people and uh, for me also as a as a positive pressure. And uh, do, do you say it like that? Uh, to to really create a dress and um, uh, in Dutch we say um, als een stok achter de deur. As a, uh, I don't know the English word for stock. The things, a stock. <laughs> no, never mind. Let go of that. Um, so, uh, I decided that Wednesday would be my sewing day. Um, I don't have space for a, a sewing room or a crafty room. Our house is filled with uh, with ourselves. <laughs> we we have a family of five and not a big house. So uh, when I want to sew, I have to pick my sewing machine and I have to put it away when I'm done. So I thought let's uh, do uh, one sewing day. Uh, so this Wednesday I start now. Actually, I started on Tuesday with washing my fabric, and I was delaying, postponing the the point that I would check how big my fabric, which I found in the in the thrift store, was, because I was a bit afraid it wouldn't be enough for a hinterland dress, um, and I didn't want to know that. <laughs> so I I was delaying that moment uh, as long as possible. But uh, I even when I put it in a washing machine. I didn't look. I just put it in the washing machine. But when I hang it out to dry, uh, I saw the reality of this fabric. <laughs> and it was, it is a lovely fabric. But let me show it. I hope you can see it. This part, this is quite some, some part, but this part is missing. So I'm missing a big part of the fabric. And um Making uh, an hinterland is it an? Do you say the n before an h? A hinterland dress or an hint? No, nah, it, it is a. I think. Um, 
but um, uh, I, there's no possibility to make a hinterland dress of it because uh, it is a ripped fabric and um, um, uh, Jessica told me when you have uh, such a fabric uh, with a little little rip in it it is a messy fabric still I didn't iron it and it's all messy I don't know if you can see the rip maybe if I hold it like that no oh that's not good for the lightning no, I, I don't know, but it's uh, it's ripped and um, uh, it is um, important that the lines, not the checkered lines or the gingham lines, but the fabric lines are um, vertical, are the same way. When you have a horizontal, horizontal, hor <laughs> this way, when you have the lines this way, um, the fabric will look different than when when you have the skirt in the other way, so that won't work. Um, that was a disappointment to me, for me. Uh, I also couldn't find my pattern. Uh, a friend uh, asked me, she's also joining, and she asked me, can I borrow your dresses? Can I fit your dresses? And can I borrow the pattern? She did buy the pattern. I, I never I give patterns away, I um, uh, but she did buy it herself, but it would be um, uh, time uh, less time consuming when she could use my pattern. Um, so uh, I, I want to grab it for her and I couldn't find it. This was not in the place uh, I supposed it would be. <laughs> so, and I didn't get it. Where is it? I, I'm quite organized. I'm not a messy person. Not sometimes, but but not not with my pattern organization. Uh, so I didn't understand, and I did declutter quite a lot of stuff out of my house, including a sewing pattern um, uh, thing. Oh, doorbell ringing! My boys are home. <laughs> um, so I. Um, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I think I put it, I, I throw it away accidentally. That's the only thing I can think of because it is nowhere. So I don't know. Um, so I, I was thinking, what is the universe telling me, <laughs> trying to tell me, don't sew a dress, Sarah, go knitting, go crocheting. But I will make that dress. I will make one and then I will decide if I'm a sewer or not. Um, but I thought maybe it's a good idea I do a kind of warming up. So I will make a skirt of this. Before I start my hinterland dress, I will turn this into a skirt. A very simple, easy peasy skirt. So I can practice my sewing skills. My sewing confidence can grow. My sewing muscles, they, they are very small, very tiny. I want very big ones. Um, so I will uh, start with that coming Wednesday. So. It was a little update. Okay, let's go to the knitting um, and let's start with this one. Uh, this is uh, a little sweater for my niece living in a project bag that was gifted to me by Lila Indy, Lila Indy, Ly Lila Indy, uh, a Belgian maker. And she made this project bag uh, from um, vintage curtains and I really love it. Uh, and in it is uh, the novice sweater. I am knitting the novice sweater for my two and a half year old niece with some uh, stash yarn. It is from Lang Yarns and I kept it, I saved it from uh, my Lang Yarns time when I worked for them. It's a superwash combination of merino and other stuff. I don't think um, it is available, available still. I think it's discontinued, you say it like that. Um, but I love the colors and um, um, she has blonde hairs and I love, um, I think it would uh, be lovely on her. Uh, I'm using the Novice Sweater Mohair Edition, uh, Junior, whatever, all the words, Petite Knit, uh, <laughs> petite knit Patterns. And they have all the patterns in, in 6 million <laughs> different <laughs> ways. With mohair for men, for baby, junior, for women, short sleeved, summer, tea, top. No, I don't know. It's uh, it's very clever. Um, but 
I don't think uh, I I don't want to buy another pattern. I can make it up myself. This is an oversized sweater with a round yoke. We can do that. So um, uh, yeah. Uh, so I um, used that, and this is a bigger, a thicker yarn, a bigger needle size, and uh, it worked out pretty good. But I am not um, happy with the ribbing at the bottom. It's too loose. The the ribbing the for the neckline worked pretty good. I used a 3.75 millimeter needle, um, 4.5 for the body, um, and oh yeah, it's too loose here. I want um the ribbing to be tighter so you get a bit of a balloony effect um, but it's flaring out too much way too much and also i have to add some length i always make things too short for her too tiny because it looks so big she's only just two but um it is an oversized sweater and uh um, it would be nice if she can wear it for quite a while uh, yeah, she can put my uh, her um uh sleeves uh, fold them double and uh, i think on tiny persons oversized can look very cute um so i will frog i will rip out the ribbing at two centimeters i guess and then add the ribbing with a three millimeter needle so it will be tighter and then we are uh knitting the sleeves and it's a lovely pattern it is for me this is an, a bit of an on the go project um normally i use uh, socks for that and I have quite some socks on my uh, want to make list, but um, uh, yeah, it's also also nice to have other projects when you uh, for chatting or drinking coffee with friends or in the car or while you are uh, on the phone with somebody or just when you need some simple straight knitting with no thinking and yeah, it's nice to have some projects. I also have my Granny Stripes blanket but it's getting a little bit bigger so it's not particularly uh, right for on the go and uh, um, I, I, I love to have some simple garments also uh, to do this so yeah will be continued and then I have a new cast on uh, I um, in my basket this is my favorite uh, uh, knitting basket um, thrifted many many years ago I love baskets. I, I love them even more than project bags because you can put it in your basket. It looks nice. It looks cozy and, and the yarn is not going anywhere. So uh, yeah, I love it. Did I say, <laughs> did I already say I love it? <laughs> it's hard jumping, a hard jumping basket. Um, I finished quite some uh, big projects last week. I finished this one. I finished my skimming shawl. I will talk about it uh, uh, coming Monday. Uh, it is lovely. <laughs> um, I finished my Ariana, uh, Ariana sweater. I did wear it yesterday for the first time and oh, it made me so happy. Uh, so I finished quite some projects and it was time to uh, pick up some old projects. The cardigan for my husband. There were quite some crafty adventures while I was knitting on that. I will share that on Monday too. Um, and uh, I also uh, promised my youngest girl uh, that I would knit her a sweater for her birthday. I would knit her the Arctic Light sweater from Kutovakika. She really wants that sweater. She needs it in, a in her life. I have my doubts about the, the reglan and the shaping. And I tried to convince her that I, she, I also could make the salty air the other one with the dropped shoulders but she's very no she she knows what she wants i don't know <laughs> from who she has that <laughs> it's my daughter when you know it you know it and no one is gonna convince you you, you uh, should do something else um so i like that part but um uh uh, I, I, when she asked me, can you finish it for my birthday? I said, yes, I can do that. I can do that. But her, her birthday is within two weeks. So that would be quite a challenge. I love a good challenge every now and then. But it's all with all the cables and there's happening a lot. So, but I was saved by a Dutch designer. <laughs> because um, when I opened my Instagram uh, on Monday morning, I saw a new pattern from a Dutch designer. Her name is Nienke. And her Instagram handle is mooi van draad. That means 
Um, no, I, I'm not going to translate that. <laughs> that. That doesn't make sense. Um, but see, uh, I, I she's a lovely, beautiful, creative lady. Uh, she um, uh, made some books, and uh, in the Netherlands, she's really uh, the woolly tattoo lady. Um, uh, she made the woolly tattoos on uh, gloves and um, on on everything, I guess. And I really love her aesthetic, and yeah, it's it's really lovely. And um, she was designing. Um, how do you say it? A vest? An open vest? I think that's right in English. In Dutch she calls it an, a, an hesje. <laughs> a Hildegard hesje. That's the name of the pattern. It is in Dutch. I'm sorry. Um, she doesn't make English patterns, I guess. Maybe I can ask, but I don't know if she wants... Uh, if, if, she, uh, it's, if that's on her list. Um, but it is a, an, a, an open vest with cables at the front, two cable panels and a um, uh, garter stitch at the back, all of a garter stitch uh, without sleeves. And um, yeah, lovely, some woolly tattoos, some uh, embroidered flowers, so in the cables. And um, she is working on that for quite a while, but she was busy. Uh, when I saw the Instagram picture a few months ago, uh, I showed it to my daughter and uh, asked her, do you like this? And she said, yes. I made a, a vest, an open vest before uh, last uh, winter and she wears it all the time. So she was really uh, immediately, she fell in love with this design. Um, so we were waiting for it very impatiently. <laughs> Uh, but uh, and 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 Monday it was the day. I didn't know it was coming, and it was such a nice surprise. So I suggested my daughter, shall I make this one for your birthday? And she said, oh yes, oh yes. So uh, I don't have to knit the sweater. I, I want, I still want the sweater. Yes, yes, that's okay, but not for your birthday. No. And this is a vest on eight nine millimeter needles, so it will be done in a minute. Uh, and I was very uh, uh, happy uh, uh, that my knitting deadline would be uh, more uh, rea reality <laughs> than, than uh, the Arctic light sweater. So uh, I did buy some yarn and I made a little video of me. Uh, I, I, I wasn't, um, I didn't, I have a lot of yarn in my stash and I maybe I could combine. It was a chunky weight yarn. I don't own chunky weight. I'm not really a chunky weight lover um, and I, of course I could combine when holding some strands double but um, my uh, girl she really wanted a pink one I don't have pink a lot of pink I have a little bit pink I guess um, so I did order yarn um, online I was not uh, uh, able to go to the yarn shop uh, they are not really near us and uh, I ordered it at the yarn shop I think it's very lovely and I will definitely want to uh, visit it once but uh, for now it was online and um, yeah I made a little video when the box it, it, it arrived very very soon when the box came and I opened it so let's take a look <laughs>
Um, yes, uh, I, uh, as you could see, uh, I bought Novita, Novita, uh, Higgewool. Novita is a Finnish brand. I never knitted with Novita before, I guess. I think it is a non-superwash. I'm not sure. It is a little bit itchy. It is very thick, this yarn. Um, and uh, yeah, the color is, I think it's called rose pink. It's not on the label. 504 it is but i'm quite sure it's rose pink and um yeah it was uh, it was the suggested yarn so um uh i i did uh, make a swatch i never swatch actually but um uh i'm a loose knitter so i always go go down a, a needle size and um for in the, the pattern suggested an eight millimeter needle for the ribbing and a nine millimeter needle for the for the rest of the vest so i started swatching on eight millimeter and i got perfect gauge wide wise not high i never go at uh, <laughs> i don't care about the, the amount of rows of course sometimes it's very important but mainly you have to knit a, a, um, a certain amount of centimeters and it doesn't matter really if your row gauge is correct i guess i never i never have problems with that um, but I got perfect gauge with my 8mm needles, so I thought, okay, then I will knit it on 7 and 8mm needles. And then I want to pick my 7mm needle in the, uh, from my Chobu set, but there is no 7mm needle. I don't know, what is that? There is no 3mm needle in the whole set and also not a 7mm needle. So I thought, blah. Um, but I had this. I I have other seven uh, millimeter needle straight ones, and also I have an old knit pro set. But I don't really like it. Um, but my and I really want to use my choke goose. I never use the big needles, the big bamboo needles. I never use them. Uh, so um, I uh, saw there was a six point five. So I picked that one uh, for the ribbing, and it worked out pretty good. Um, the pattern is written in pieces. That's still a little bit of a Dutch thing, I guess. I don't want to knit it in pieces. So I uh, modified it uh, a little bit. Um, uh, the pattern told you to knit a front pan a back panel and then a left front panel and a right front panel. And then you um, uh, sew it together. And also uh, the, the shoulders you close with, um, with a mattress stitch. I guess Sarah doesn't like metro stitch and sewing. It is just I can can't do it neatly enough to like it, and I didn't practice it enough to do it neatly enough, <laughs> and I don't like it enough to practice it enough to look it neatly enough. <laughs> That's a bit of a <laughs> I just want to knit. So I decided uh, I could knit it in one piece. So um, I have to um, cast on uh, uh, four stitches fewer because um, when you don't have to sew it together, you don't use the first and the last stitch of the panels. So I skipped four stitches and I think it will work out pretty good. And I can close the shoulder uh, uh, neat with... Um, shoulder seams, the shoulder seams with the three needle bind off and there's no sewing and Sarah's happy. <laughs> um, <coughs> so um, I did that and um, yeah, I think I, I did cast on with eight millimeter needles because I want the cast on to be uh, stretchy enough. I was a bit worried that when I would also cast it on with 6.5, it would be too tight. And uh, of course I ran out of yarn. I did a long tail cast on and um, I, I didn't make it. I Five stitches before I was ready, my yarn and was too short. <laughs> so that was a bummer. Uh, and then I, I don't know why I say that was a bummer. I don't know what it means. I don't know what, what bummer means, but it sounds suitable, but maybe I'm saying something very weird. I'm sorry. Um, so I did it again and uh, then of course I left with a big pile of yarn. The long tail was very long yet. I, I have I could make a little yarn ball of it. So long was it. Um, yeah, so I uh, I did that and uh, yeah, I, I, I really love it. You can't see it because it's on the short cable. Um, but here is the cable section. Let me, when I stand here, I can take a look. 
it is very big because it's a chunky yarn so um, I really love the slip stitch part and the cables and here uh, in this part of the cables there will be uh, tiny tiny flowers and it's really lovely yeah um i did work i i cast it on yesterday and uh i had quite some knitting time in the evening <laughs> i'm also very tired now tired now uh, our um 16 year old daughter uh, left for a school trip this night uh she and her uh whole class and two teachers are um going to barcelona in spain so that's very nice that's a very uh, a very nice adventure and the bus did leave at 1 30 at morning and that's a horrible time <laughs> to say goodbye to your child because we had to bring her to the rail station railway station and um it was too um uh, too early to get some proper sleep before and it was too late way too late uh, to go to bed I never go uh, to bed so late I'm not a I'm not an evening person I'm more of a morning person I like to get up early in the morning uh, but when when we uh, realized uh, how late we had to bring her to the railway station, the first thing I thought was oh, extra knitting time, extra knitting time. So I did knit quite a bit extra, um, a few hours, which I normal uh, normally are sleeping. <laughs> so I did miss the sleep. So maybe when I have sleepy eyes or look a bit pale or whatever, I was in bed at two and I was up at six. So that's that that's four hours of sleep and that's not that's not enough for for nobody i guess but certainly not for me um but i did do the knitting so that was very nice <coughs> um yeah can i tell it's it's very fuzzy yarn there's fuzz all over and it, and i feel it in my nose and it's on my clothes all the time but uh, we will see oh yeah that's what i want to say I really would love to have one myself, but not in chunky yarn. I don't love the chunky look of it. I don't know. Um, but I thought I can make one in worsted weight. I have a lot of brown lead lopi or other yarn and I would love to make um, make one in worsted weight. And I think the pattern is quite easy. So um, I can modificate it and make, uh, make it on smaller needles. So I would love to have a dark brown with embroidered flowers. Oh, that sounds very exciting and hard jumping. So um, I, I, I'm quite sure I will make one myself too. And this will be ready in a minute. Oh yeah, this one. Uh, the, the cables are very easy. C knitting cables, cable knitting can be, um, uh, can, can, <laughs> that's my sleepy brain right now. Cable knitting can be quite intimidating, but this is really so easy. It is really, it is, it is a repeat of six needles. And in one of those six needles, you have to do the cabling and it's so easy. Um, I tried to do it without a cable needle, but I, I don't really love that. And it's not for me, the fastness, the speedness of, of knitting is not the most important. Um, I, I prefer enjoy the movements you have to make. Uh, and I really discovered I love to knit my cables with a DPN. I also own cable needles, but I don't know the, the, the knick-knack in it. Knick-knack is not a word, I know it, but the, the knick, the, I don't love it. And, and I, I can hold the DPNs on a um, more uh, nicer way than the cable needles. Um, and I luckily I had had some uh, thick DPNs in my uh, in my knitting needle. I don't think you can see it in my knitting needle face. <laughs> so I will work on this with a lot of pleasure, and uh, this will definitely be finished before her birthday. That's easy. <laughs> um, I also did order some extra yarn. I wasn't uh, worried about the yarn I bought for her because. I didn't have it, it was not for me, but I, I wouldn't buy any bar, uh, yarn for myself. But but this happened. <laughs> it was, um, I made the mistake that after um, 
putting this in my online yarn basket, uh, online uh, uh, shop basket, the yarn for my uh, girl. I took a look to the other yarns that they were uh, the, the the shop was selling, and that's a mistake when you don't need yarn. And then I found uh, see the whole super soft, and suddenly I realized that I really need two of these in my life. This is the color Conquer. Um, Holst Garn Super Soft and um, uh, the reason I bought it is because I still want a fern and feather sweater in my life. Uh, I knitted two fern and feather sweaters, uh, the pattern is from Jennifer Steingoss years ago. One in superwash yarn that was a horrible color combination and also not a good quality of yarn but the fit was perfect. I even um, uh, dyed the sweater black because I love the fit but it was just the quality of yarn was was very bad so now very bad yeah actually it was very bad <laughs> it was not good um, so I didn't own that anymore uh, I do not own that anymore and I also made made one in um, also superwash hand dyed merino yarn and it was a bit of a Special color combination, not really my colors. I don't know why I chose that color combination, but I also forgot to alternating the skeins and the difference between two hand dyed skeins was really way too big. So it was also not looking nice. So I frocked that sweater. Then uh, I think this spring I cast it on a fern and feather with Let Lopi because I really love the fit. And I also really love the podcast of Orchid Heart. Oh, I don't know her name. I'm sorry, but she, she uh, one of her favorite sweaters is the fern and feather and every time I see her wearing the sweater, I want one myself. <laughs> so, so I did watch the podcast and then I realized I need a fern and feather. But um, I have a cone of whole super soft uh, in a beige color and then I thought maybe whole super soft will be work, will work out better than let low be because it's uh, a DK weight instead of a worsted weight. So um, that will my will be my last try for the fern and feather. I don't know when, but I do have the yarn. I also oh, it was a gift from Jessica. Um, she uh, she gave me uh, um, uh, Jessica is my knitting friend um, from the dresses uh, um, from the make along, and she gave me stitch huggers. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I'm losing my stitches all the time and I don't really mind. Sometimes it's annoying, but those stitch huggers you can uh, put on your uh, the tips of your knitting needles and it's a um, it's a durable silicon thing and um uh it won't go off. So I think uh, I think they are nice. Yeah. So that was a lovely gift. Um yeah, I think I told all the things I want to share before I want to share the details about my cardigan. Yes, yes, I did. Um, <laughs> sleepy brain. Uh, this Monday I have uh, other things to share, uh, but I already said that, I guess. My shawl, the uh, cardigan for my husband, and I also have a new little tiny cast on I want to do this weekend. Also a birthday cast on for my other girl. Um, yeah, okay. But let's go to the cardigan. Before I uh, will tell you all the details about my cardigan, I want to share a little video. Uh, my husband and I, we were walking with the dog in a little, in a beautiful uh, little uh, piece of nature. Um, and it was such a nice evening. It was Wednesday evening, I guess, and the light was very good. And I said, oh, maybe you can take some pictures. I was wearing my cardigan, take some pictures and do some filming of me in my cardigan. And it was, uh, it, it was quite awkward, quite uncomfortable. I always make my pictures myself when with finished objects, um, uh, uh, and uh, never, uh, no one's involved. And that's better because I, I think making pictures of yourself wearing a new finished object is not my favorite thing to do. And I think I, uh, a lot of people will understand. It's it's hard to get the good picture. You are, it's yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it is. It's always uh, quite time time consuming. 
because you are never satisfied with, with the outcome it, it, it took some time it takes some time to get the perfect picture or not the perfect picture picture um uh, but you know what i mean so now doing it with him was also uh yeah i felt a bit uncomfortable even if this is my husband but uh the the posing the i don't know it felt a bit but but he made really lovely videos and uh I uh, share it um, in between. There was someone um, uh, suggesting uh, uh, I could twist the screen. Um, so the, how do you say it? Uh, so the, uh, I know um, the landscape version. The landscape, uh, filming landscape is better for YouTube and filming portrait is better for uh, Instagram. And um, uh, someone suggested me to film portrait my end videos at the end of my podcast but at the end of my episodes i always share the portrait videos with my daily diaries um uh and but i make them for instagram so that's the reason why they are portrait and uh, i'm not gonna make them for instagram and for youtube because that's that's just way too much it's just a little extra and also this video i made uh, as a reel for instagram so that's the reason why it's landscape. No, portrait. Ah. <laughs> um, so I know it's better to film a landscape for YouTube, but it's not always uh, uh, working out. Uh, it's nice when you can think, use things on both platforms. More knitting time. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to that video. nice wasn't it as i said um uh, i didn't realize i didn't know that the pattern would uh, be released today because otherwise i i would keep my tada moment from last monday for today um but that's okay that's okay i uh, i'm very happy the pattern is out um right now um i want to make a little a little big summary of all the things um, i want to share about this cardigan and uh, i'm quite sure i shared most of the things already in the episodes from the last months i started this version at the beginning of august so i knitted it in less than two months um i did um uh, I did love the deadline of the test knit. Uh, let me start at the beginning. It is a test knit. <laughs> it is a test knit from Eve. Eve is a Dutch knitter and this is her first pattern. She created it all by herself and I think that's quite a big job. I, I asked her, didn't you use any tech ed editors? No, no, she said, I didn't know how it worked. So I just do it, did it myself. Um, it's quite a big job, I guess. Um, but she created this pattern. It is based on a store-bought uh, cardigan she owned, and I owned it too. Um, and it was one of my favorite cardigans. I don't own it anymore because it was not. It was too bad. It was also. It was a little bit of wool, but also with acrylic, and um, um, I don't know. It was not beautiful enough to keep uh, uh, anymore. So, um, so when she told she was designing a pattern based on that cardigan, I immediately immediately thought, oh, I want it. And she showed me once when we met on a knitting event and it was so beautiful. So when she did a call for test knitters, I was in immediately with quite a few other ladies. And um, it was my plan to make it with, um, with non-superwash yarn. I chose Jamesons and Smith. And um, it didn't work out. I couldn't get gauged. The the, um, the length of the Jamie and Smith was the same as the sock yarn. See, uh, Eve used sock yarn for it. I will tell you more about it in a minute. Um, but um, 
the yarn, the Jameson's was more fluffy, I guess. So uh, it, the fabric got wider and it was way too wide. My sleeves got way too wide and I went down a needle size and another needle size. I am a loose knitter, I know. So, but it didn't work out. And I, because it's an all over color work cardigan uh, in fingering weight, I really want a, a nice fit and not, not a, a, an oversized fit. I love a fitted fit. Um, yeah, so uh, at the end I decided to uh, to go for the same yarn she used because I had a little bit of time pressure by then um, and also uh, um, I just want to knit the thing. <laughs> so so I did choose um, uh, the sock yarn and this um, I have quite some left. My cardigan did weigh... Uh, 342 grams including the buttons and I have all the color numbers and the amounts of yarn on my Ravelry page. Um, this is my color combination. I don't know if you can see it maybe. Sometimes I'm editing and I'm I'm not doing it right, I'm not holding it up enough so I guess this will be right. This is my color combination, six colors. It was quite hard to pick the right color combination. Um, what I did, I never did that before. It is quite hard to see the end result um, in your head. Uh, what I did, um, I, I really, I, I loved her color combination. I absolutely loved it, but I really want to make one of my own. And um, uh, what I did was um, uh, picking colors that I liked, of course, that I loved hard jumping colors that was the first step but also when she used dark colors i chose dark color too when she used light colors i chose light color too the black uh i did at the same spot she does and it worked out pretty good i i did change a little bit and um and at the end it became this color combination and uh, i really uh, i really am happy with it it's really uh, it's really me it is uh, um yeah, I always say durable in the French way, I guess. Uh, you also can say durable. It is a Dutch brand, uh, a Dutch brand of sock yarn. It's made in Turkey. It's on the label. It is 70% uh, wool and 20 25% 75% wool and 25% polyamide. So it is a superwash sock yarn. And that's not what I would recommend for a, an all over color cardigan, steaked, but... It didn't disappoint me. I really love the fabric. Um, yeah, it's after blocking it creates quite a nice fabric. I, I don't know how it will hold. And, and of course it's not super not non-super wash, but it is okay. And it really knitted nice, so I'm happy with that. Um, the pattern. I knitted size one. It is a top that no, it is a it is a bottom-up pattern. And I definitely decided, also with the Crafty Adventures uh, for the cardigan for my husband, I don't like bottom-up knitting. I do like it for socks, but not for garments. Ah, I don't see um, the good things of knitting. Yeah, of course, there are good things. There are positive things of knitting something bottom-up, but they are not um, weighing enough to... Uh, to put the the bad things away, the negative things away. Um, yeah, I I just prefer top down knitting because you here is on this part there is happening more and you can uh, modificate it more to your body than when you're knitting it from the bottom up. You have to knit all the things and quite some investment and then you then here it's happening and it's harder to adjust something to modificate something so. For example, I started with the sleeves. I think that's perfect for gauging. Is that a word? For swatching. Uh, to measure your gauge. Although the gauge on my sleeves is always a little bit tighter than on the rest of the knitting. Um, but also to check if your color combination is nice. Um, but I started with a provisional cast on because I was I had troubles with getting gauge. I, I I was worried my sleeves wouldn't be long enough. So I thought, okay, let's start with a provisional cast on so I can uh, um, adjust as much as I want to. And I did 
At the end, I only knitted 10 rounds extra, I guess, so that was not really much, but um, I wasn't sure about it before. And also for the body, I started with a provisional cast on and I added the ribbing later. And the body was perfect the length, I could just follow the pattern, but yeah, you don't know it when you start. So um, when you knit bottom up, you can, you can play with it. So uh, no, no, when you knit top down, it's my sleepy brain, I'm sorry. It will be messy today. Um, so I started with the sleeves and then I um, put them on the waist yarn and then I knitted the body. It's a sticked cardigan, so you have uh, some stick stitches in the middle and the color changes are in your stick. There are quite some yarn ends to weave in on the sleeves, but I didn't do that on the body. It was a little bit exciting because the yarn ends were in the stick. Uh, I... I um, how do you say it? When you uh, reinforce the stick with my sewing machine twice, um, because it is superwash yarn, I really I always do it with my sewing machine. I want to be sure that <laughs> that it stays where it stays, uh, where it has uh, where I want it to be. Um, uh, but uh, especially with superwash yarn, it's a little bit more slippery. A little bit more. It is more slippery than non superwash. So I don't like a crochet. Uh, reinforcement um i i never did it so you can't say that you don't like something when you never did it sarah yeah okay i think crochet reinforcement is not my thing but i'm not sure because i've never done it <laughs> um so, uh, and after that, I just cut off all the yarn ends and then I was a bit worried because I saw someone on Instagram and she was not doing it. She was still weaving it in and I thought, that's not necessary, is it? <laughs> and she said, I just want to be sure. And I thought, oh no, but it is working out pretty good until now. So I think it's possible. I think it's absolutely okay. And it, uh, it saved a lot of time. Um, so I uh, knitted bottom up and then at the sleeves, uh, uh, the pattern that was an interesting interesting thing. I love color work because of the rhythm of the color changes. One brown, two green, one brown, two green. It's very satisfying, very relaxing and you can do it intuitive. But those star pattern, it was not intuitive at all. It was really, it, it drove me crazy. And it was, um, the chart was was a little bit um, um, in a layout of 10 stitches. And that was not really the meaning, but I interpreted it like that. So I divided my stitch markers every 10 stitches. Uh, and it, it, it was not the right rhythm. And I struggled myself through the pattern and it was not, it was not flowing. And it, I was a bit disappointed because one of the, one of the, uh, greatest things of knitting color work is that flow and that intuitive part. And then I realized I could change my, my stitch markers. So instead of every 10 stitches, I made parts of 9 stitches and 15 stitches. And suddenly the whole thing changed. It got rhythm, rhythmic. It, 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 suddenly it was flowing and it was intuitive. And I found that so inspiring because... Um, it's so important you do the things in the right rhythm. When you don't do the, the, the same things, you can do the same things, but in other rhythms, and it can be a whole world of difference. Uh, when you don't do the things in the right rhythm, it can cost you a lot of energy and it, it will be hard to do and you will lose your motivation and it, 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 it's not hard jumping and that, that was I definitely feeling when I was knitting this part on the sleeves. But when you do the things in the right rhythm, it can completely change. When I changed the rhythm, it suddenly became easy and fun and hard jumping and flowing and intuitive and i was so impressed by that because that's a life lesson i always get my uh, life lessons from my uh, knitting and crochet also in other aspects of your life it is important you do the things in the right rhythm and don't forget 
in your own rhythm, not in somebody else's rhythm. So that was really inspiring, the difference between doing the same thing in another rhythm. So I will keep that in mind. The right rhythm, find your own rhythm and it will flow. <laughs> so, um, so I changed that, but because I changed a little bit of the stitch markers and also I want to uh, Kitchener stitch the armholes. That was not how it was described in the pattern, but I changed a little bit and I did, I do think I messed up my raglan part here because of that, because I didn't understand the pattern and how I was supposed to do it. Um, and, um, when I did the reclam, I, I skipped the star in the reclam, but um, you could see very good where I catched my floats and it was very messy and not nice. So I uh, ripped out, I, and I, not, I ri didn't rip out because with so many stitches in this yarn, I knitted back and oh, it, there were quite some stitches, so it was quite time, co time consuming. And I did several tries and I wasn't satisfied with all. And I, I didn't, I, yeah, and, and, and Eve and the other testers, they didn't have that problem. So then I just thought, okay, let's go with it. And I do it this way. And now it's a bit messy. And I was so disappointed about the messy reclan. My perfectionist was really complaining. And I, but I also felt very clearly I didn't want to go back again. And I quite often go back again and again and again until I, I think it's good. But now I didn't want to. I felt a little bit of the time pressure, but also I didn't want to. So I thought, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, practice my imperfectionism with this. And um, it was a little bit hard in the beginning, but when I was at the point I could fit the cardigan, I saw that exactly this point was disappearing under my arms, in my armholes. So I, um, uh, I, I, I was happy. So you couldn't see it. I don't know if you can see it at my back. I don't know. I can't see it. So <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, so it was quite good. It is, it isn't perfect. It is imperfect. And also a life lesson, a piece with an imperfectionism can still be hard jumping. <laughs> so that was also nice to, uh, to realize. Um, a good thing of knitting bottom up was that um, uh, I could, uh, the, the rows were getting uh, smaller and smaller. So it went faster and faster. And at the end there was, was some bind off and some short rows. And then, uh, then I sticked uh, with the sewing machine and it worked out pretty good. And then I picked up for the button bands. I want to tell you two things about it. One thing is that I first knitted the button bands and then uh, the pattern um, uh, uh, is telling you to do a little ribbon at the inside to hide your stick. But I, I don't, I, I really love the knitted uh, facing and um, I always did that with my sticks, but then with the stick sandwich, which was here. And I didn't want that, so I tried something for the first time, and th this will be definitely my new favorite. Um, I did one, after picking up the stitches, I did one row of, uh, before I started Knit 2 Pearl, so I did one row of Knit All. So here were pearl bumps, and I picked up the stitches in the pearl bumps. It's not uh, definitely necessary, you can also pick up the stitches in the regular stitches. But I lo love, it was easier to do more clear and then i knitted a few rows of knits and pearls so uh, it creates a stockinette fabric and then i bound off with a uh, i-cord bind off and um, i sew it um, back here i yeah here's a bit i don't know but i really love the look it's really nice and neat um i did um uh, knit my facing a little bit too wide so i had to go back and I'm glad I did it because this looked better. I think I knitted six rows, six rows and then I cord bind off. And yeah, I really love this on both sides. So uh, Sarah's happy. Um, and a little bit about uh, the buttons. Uh, I told you, uh, I guess I told you last Monday, I uh, forgot uh, uh, at the buttons. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's not good. Um, I learned that it's good to place, when you are placing your buttons, to place a button on the widest part of your breast. 
of your of your bust and um i forgot <laughs> i always forgot those nice suggestions <laughs> Um, so I didn't do it and um, um, now my cardigan is standing open. There's a little bit, um, yeah, you can see it. Although there is enough ease for me, um, yeah, uh, this is happening. But I never wear my cardigans closed. Uh, on a shirt I wear it like this, but uh, on a dress I wear it with uh, the uh, only the upper button closed. I really love this. Um, but Eve uh, replied to me, she said, that's the reason why I uh, added seven buttons. So uh, I didn't check that part of the pattern. I just did my own thing because I know how to knit buttons and uh, uh, buttonholes. And, and I just checked how many buttons uh, there were in my stash that I would love to have here. And the, the, I only had five of th those. And I, I don't like seven buttons in this size would be too much for me, but smaller buttons would work out. Um, so that was a good advice. Um, more buttons will uh, decrease the chance it will stand open. Um, but but this worked out pretty good for me. Um, <coughs> I don't know. Uh, did I tell all I want to? The pattern is in English. Little detail for my English uh, subscribers, uh, viewers. Um, I will link it all down below. There is a, um, how do you say it? A discount code running this weekend. You uh, uh, can find all the information linked down below. I will link all the uh, the pages from A for Shelf. Um, yeah, and if you have questions about uh, the cardigan, you can uh, you can uh, ask uh, Ave. But I'm very happy, and I'm. Uh, I'm curious to her next plans. Okay, this was it for today. Um, I have the feeling I forget something about my cardigan. I'm sorry, let me check my, my notes. It's my sleepy brain. I'm really tired. I already filmed my, uh, my Dutch um, episode and uh, I think I need an extra cup of coffee today. I will make it in a minute. Um, no. No, I, I, I shared all my notes. So it was really nice to work on this cardigan. It's also, oh yeah, and now I know uh, what I wanted to say. It, it was quite good for me to have the deadline um, um, uh, because it's time consuming. Uh, I knitted on 2.25 millimeter needles, a garment, and I, I'm a small person. So um, it is not, it is, I think three millimeter needles is what the patterns say, but I am a very loose knitter. And I uh, f found it, it, it cost me quite some time and effort and I really enjoyed it. But there's always a point when you lost your, um, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not really your motivation yeah maybe when it's taking too long <laughs> too much time and i was wondering how would it be because i really love the feeling of such a thin all over color work cardigan how would it be when i knit this when i cast this on and and knit on this um uh, 30 minutes a day or um or i don't know one day in the week or whatever so you will make a cardigan in a year or something. Would that be satisfying too? I don't know. That was something I was wondering um, for a really slow progress. 30 minutes a day. Would that work? 15 minutes a day? Little, little, tiny, tiny, small steps. So I would cast on one now and it will be finished next year. I don't think I'm patient enough for that. I'm, I'm a product knitter. I really want the finished object. I absolutely enjoy the knitting, absolutely, because otherwise I wouldn't do it. But but the the end result is the most heart jumping to me that I can wear something. I'm a happy Sarah all week. I can wear this cardigan. It's making me so happy. It's making me more happy than knitting it. It's it's quite interesting because I know there are a lot of people um, uh, enjoying the knitting more than the wearing. I enjoy the wearing the most, I guess. I enjoy both, but the wearing the most. <laughs> okay, enough for today. Um, 
I want to wish you a very nice weekend. I hope you have some uh, crafting time, some knitting time or crochet time. And uh, I definitely hope you have some hard jumping moments. Um, and uh, I, uh, I will search for them too, I guess. I have some nice plans for the weekend and uh, also some nice uh, knitting plans. And uh, I will share them uh, coming Monday with you. Uh, and for now, I want to thank you for watching and um, see you later. Bye bye.